Hey guys, welcome again to Whiskey Wilderness. Today we are gonna talk about paint and finishes and an option that some of you guys may not have heard about called Monster Liner. So everyone knows that at some point you generally have to repaint your bus or your van or whatever. I personally prefer to have something that holds up, you know what I mean? So years and years and years ago, I had a Jeep and I wanted to do a Jurassic Park Jeep and I wanted something that was simple and easy that I could do myself. I didn't have to pay a professional to do for me. And I discovered Monster Liner. Monster Liner is a epoxy type bed liner product that you can do yourself whether you roll it on or spray it. They have over 67 colors now. It's really, really great. And today what I'm gonna be doing is kind of playing around with the possibilities of what Monster Liner is. But first, let me take you through a little section of their website so you can see kind of what I'm talking about and get a little bit more perspective on what that product is. So as you can see, their website has a ton of information. There are so many colors that you can choose from. I love the finish that Monster Liner has. You can roll it or you can spray it. Here's a showcase of just some of their products that you can get from two gallon kits, one gallon kits, rollers, spray guns, etc. There's so many things that you can choose from and you can even see past projects with all sorts of crazy color schemes on their website as well. It's really great. Okay, so I originally asked a question that a lot of people that have used Monster Liner over the years and me, I'm a heavy user. I've done four different vehicles in Monster Liner. It's amazing stuff. But a lot of people are asking about what about metallics? Can you ever do a metallic? And while they have been working on it for a few years, they haven't gotten around to putting it out. So on a forum from Monster Liner Masters on Facebook, I riddled them a question. Could I put a powder that's meant for an epoxy countertop system into Monster Liner to make that Monster Liner metallic? And they said, that's kind of a cool idea. We're going to help you try that. And they went ahead and sent me a couple of free items, just a little kit to kind of help get me started and going so I can test this out. Let me show you what that is. Okay, so they sent me a couple of these. I'm going to show you one. So they sent me this, a number of these, and their S8 reducer. Now, inside of this bucket, we have quartz. So they sent me two of these. This comes with their catalyst and a quart of their epoxy with nothing in it, which is really, really great. I did decide to go one step further and get some tints, but let me show you what exactly these are. So what comes in this little, what they call a roller kit is a sponge with this particular material that they use for all their stuff a roller with a handle and an extra roller, which is really important. If you guys decide to do this stuff, always, always, always order extra rollers because I guarantee you, you don't want these separating on you when it starts to get tacky and get stuck in that liner. So make sure you get extras. They sent me a whole bunch of extras. I'm really excited because I'm gonna be doing at least three or four different things today. So I got a tint just in case. I wanted to see if I can make a completely opaque metallic using the epoxy metallic powders that I did find. But in the event I can't do that, I'm gonna need a base color. So I chose to do zombie sunset because my goal today is to create a hammered copper effect. So in addition to this, I ordered two different types of powders. So these are two different kinds of epoxy powder. These are from a countertop company. Uh, this is a bronze dust, which has a lot of mica flakes in it. So it's a bit more like shimmery, glittery look. And then this is a straight up metallic powder. So I'm thinking this is going to be the one that's going to create a nice opaque metallic for me to use, but we'll find out. I'm going to do um, a half a quart in this. I'm going to do a half a quart with this. And I'm going to do a half a quart with this. And then we have another little extra something. Let me go grab it. So something else that we decided to try because most of us schoolie, van lifer, peoples, anyone that has an RV, like at some point you wanna kinda 
create heat resistance on your roof so you don't overheat things like that however i'm not a big fan of the silicone based paints that a lot of people use i don't like that they get dirty easily i don't like that they're hard to clean and i certainly don't like that you can't stick anything down to them once you do it so we're also going to do a half a quart with this this is aerogel powder this is 99 percent air this is actually an entire liter of this stuff and it feels like all i'm holding is a bottle um what we're going to do is we're going to mix this in at an appropriate amount into a uh, half a quart as well and we're going to test what the heat resistant qualities are of that in order to do that we're going to use a semi-dark color which i ordered which is cop of feel which is a kind of a deep coppery brown that they that they carry. This is a much more vibrant orange yellow undertone color, which is what to me is more of the copper color that I'm looking for. It's very similar uh, to this, uh, maybe a bit more of orange in it. So we're gonna give it a shot. What we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna show you here in a second um, the extra components that I picked up today. And we're gonna be hand mixing into some of the smaller cups and we're gonna Give it a shot. I'm also going to show you how to prep some metal, get that ready. We're going to try a couple different variants of this stuff. So these are two metal panels that we pulled out of our bus and because they're already painted, they remind me a lot of vehicles that are already done. So I'm going to have here my MEK, I'm going to have my scuff pad, and I'm going to have some rags as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start cleaning these and prepping them for Monster Liner, which means you scuff and scuff and scuff. What you want is a coating of dust almost on the metal so you know that you got some of the paint up and you got a good scuff. That just gives you a surface for the liner to adhere to. That first one I'm going to paint black so I have a different color just to show how the colors are going to transfer. Now I'm gonna take a rag, paper towel, whatever, put some MEK on it. This just completely cleans the surface of any and all oils and debris and gets it where that liner is gonna really stick to it. Okay guys, so this is just my basic table setup for this. I have a scale that I can weigh out in grams since these are all really small increments of this. I'm weighing them all in grams. I'm gonna start with a half quart of the monster liner in here. Then I'm going to add the copper metallic powder, and I'm only adding two grams of this to this amount. And I'm going to stir it up really, really, really well. Make sure that it's completely put into the liner. And I'm super happy. This is so shiny. It's incredible. Now you have to keep in mind, Monster Liner is not a high gloss finish. It's more of a satin finish. So we're hoping we can make the best of this. I'm adding the catalyst now. This is what will help the liner harden. Once you add this, you have limited working time. So just be aware of that should you use Monster Liner in the future. Okay, number two, I'm gonna use the other half of this quart. And in this one, we're gonna have a little experiment with the bronze dust. Now this is the one with the heavier mica flake. So this is more of a glitter additive. Whereas the metallic powder itself is more of a pearlescent finish. This also looks really, really nice, but it's extremely sheer. Then the rest of this catalyst.
All right, number three is going to be our solid color tint. We're adding a little bit of the zombie sunset. I've always been a fan of this color. It's a very loud color, but it's really, really fun. And it's looked great on every vehicle I've seen it on. Adding the last of this catalyst to it. And we're gonna be ready to go. Colors left to right is the copper metallic the bronze dust, and then the zombie sunset tint. In case you were wondering. I have this plate set up so I can try this. This is just our first coat, so there will be some show through. I'm also expecting this pretty heavily from these metallics. You know, this is just an experiment, so I'm just trying to figure out the best way to create an opaque color. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun and uh, see what happens. So on this middle one, what I'm doing is I'm laying the zombie sunset out as a base color. And then I'm gonna put, during our second coat, the two metallics that I made over top of it, just to see what the finish might be if you wanted to use them as a top coat on your traditional Monster Liner colors. I decided I also wanna see what happens if you mix the metallics with just a little bit of tint and see if that kind of pulls up the opacity of them a little bit and see if we can make them a little bit more solid. And it's still very pretty, it's very shimmery. You can't really see it on camera, but I wanted to test it out and it definitely changes the level of coverage on this and I'm really liking it. So I decided as part of my test, I wanted to have a dark background because so many people have dark colored vehicles or use dark primer. I will say the color of your primer does dictate a lot of how these coverages go or the base color of your car does dictate how well these cover on any given day. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I have that first one is the copper metallic by itself, which with black underneath it covers really nicely. And then again, I'm doing the roll of the zombie sunset so I can split my metallics over top of it to see how they cover. And again, this is our little bowl with the tint added a little bit to the metallic. This particular one is added to the bronze dust and not the copper metallic. I did decide though that I wanted to see what would happen if I mixed the two metallic types together just as a fun little idea to see how they would cover. I did a two parts copper, one part bronze dust on this and it was actually very pretty. All right, it's time for second coat. So what I'm doing here is putting the copper metallic directly over the zombie sunset. And it covered quite well. I'm also gonna put the bronze dust directly over the zombie sunset. I am using the roller that had the little bit of tint on it, which I thought would help. And it's definitely sheer. This is more of a kind of finishing topper at the moment. I'm planning to do some more experiments to see if I can bring this up to more of a level where it's its own color. And then I'm putting the copper metallic, just a second coat of the straight copper metallic as well. I'm actually quite impressed with this one. And then our little mix of the zombie sunset with the bronze dust on the end there. Okay, so for second coats on the black, I'm going right in with the copper metallic for second roll. And again, very impressed with the coverage on this. It's very sparkly. And then I'm doing a coat of it over top of the zombie sunset as well. 
And then our little mixed one, I'm not very impressed with this at the moment, but I think it's just a ratio thing. I'm doing our second coat of the mixed metallics, which is the bronze dust and the copper mixed together. And then I'm doing a little spackle of the bronze dust over top of the zombie sunset as well. Okay, so this is our final mix. We are adding aerogel to a small amount of the liner at the moment just to kind of get it down and sticky. And then we're going to be adding a little bit more liner here in just a minute. We're adding this directly to some of our zombie sunset just so we have some kind of backing color so we can kind of see where we're putting it. But this stuff is incredible. I mean, the resistance of heat on this stuff is absolutely insane like you've got to do a little research and look it up we're really really hoping this works because we would ideally like to use this product on our roof as well in order to create a nice heat barrier but that's also really resistant and something that has a little bit of texture and that we can potentially glue new new solar panels to in the future so as you can see the consistency here is quite nice and we're just going to go ahead and roll it onto this extra piece of metal that we have and I would say the consistency of this is very, very similar to the consistency of Monster Liner's black Monster Liner, their stock black that they make. It's just slightly thicker. So here's some close-ups. This is the copper metallic in two layers with no other colors added to it. It's very, very pretty. It is still just a little bit sheer. I've got to work on that but it looks really lovely. This is all natural sunlight. This is fully dried. The second one here is the zombie sunset with the copper over it. And then the bottom is where I put on the bronze dust. This is the copper and bronze dust together. And then of course our failed experiment at the end. This is the copper metallic on the white. You can really see the coverage on it here. It's really nice. Honestly, though, this video does not do these justice in any capacity. They are way, way sparklier in person. Okay, guys, so I'm going to say that the day went pretty dang well. I think I am on the verge of getting this exactly right. I got a beautiful finish today. I don't even think you can really see the quality of this it's so pretty in the sun it's super super shimmery and beautiful so basically what happened is i finished off the day with a talk to monster liner they're gonna send me a couple more quarts so i can really fine tune the details of what the mix is to get the best metallic finish I think I've discovered it, but you guys are going to have to wait for part two to find out about that. And then, of course, we're going to paint our bus. So that's going to be coming in the future. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found it entertaining and educational in some way. Please ask me anything. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback and get some ideas.